and welcome everybody to the Geeking Poetic Podcast channel. One of your hosts, Larry Roberts. Uh, this terminating motherfucker down the way from me. <laughs> you know, he's he's got uh, John Connor on the back of his cycle. He's got his shotgun loaded. He's got, you know, he's got his cool shades in his back pocket somewhere. And he's ready to uh, fix the future or keep it, you know, okay. So... <laughs> You don't wind up getting blown up on some playground somewhere, yeah. right? <laughs> it's none other than the veto nader. <laughs> it is the veto nader. And then this uh, thrill seeker over here, she's always cruising around somewhere in the deep south, chasing after natural disasters. Just you know, she's she's one of those man. She's got some she's got some deep seated issues when it comes to tacos and tornadoes. <laughs> It's about right. Yeah. It, Hi, Megan here. Yep. <laughs> and uh, what the hell are we here to talk about? What What is it that we're here to talk about? We're going to talk about finally some summer blockbusters. Yeah, this is something we've talked about for a while now. Yeah, a couple years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, two, you know, two, three years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How long have we been around? <laughs> two, three years. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Almost since the beginning. Now, we've we've talked about some of these movies on their own. We have. But we've never tried to like rank them and pick like what we personally each of us think is personally like the ultimate top five summer blockbuster film. And I think we all had different criteria we used to right. gauge what we determined was a summer blockbuster. Well, I think that was the only way we could finally get this done yeah. is that we, we, we were never going to all be on the same page with no. this because <laughs> we come from different eras to a degree. Mm hmm. You know, when you look at like where my movies are largely drawn from and Vito's, I think, and yours, it, they're they're all a little bit different. So it's and we and we saw them in different ways and stuff. Some of us went to the theater a lot. Some of us did not go to the theater a lot. Went to the library. <laughs> some of us went to the library <laughs> a lot. Exactly. So we ended up to do this. We had to come up with our own uh, individual criteria that that we did this because like, I know, speak it for me, like my list, I think these are all movies that people would consider in at least in a top 20 or top 30 mm -hmm. list. You know, none of these are like real obscure. Okay. But that kind of, because to me, that's the way it needs to be. It's a summer blockbuster. Like there are some movies that I associate very much with like summer and everything. Like say, for example, a movie like 1982, who's spring break it's this really bad comedy movie about these like four college age kind of guys mm -hmm. that end up rooming together on a spring break and the two groups of friends two sets of friends and they don't know each other and it, it, anyway it's one of those kind of like <laughs> 80s like you know boobs and beers and yeah, bros buddy feel good kind of thing right and i saw it when i was like 10 yeah you know, and I just thought it was the funniest thing I ever saw. I, and it's really bad. It's really dumb. But it, it, it does have that whole feel to it. And so I could consider this a summer movie, a summer blockbuster, but it's not a blockbuster. This okay. is kind of like a forgotten lower budget movie. It just doesn't meet the criteria for me. Okay. So for me, it has to be something that was like a bigger budget, bigger cast. Mm hmm bigger story like everything has to just be sort bigger. of bigger everything just has to be big it's blockbuster <laughs> man you know it for me this is like i looked at it like this had to be movies that if i was booking like a drive-in movie theater and it was like i'm gonna pick five movies that i want everybody to like see just to have like the whole full summer big experience and it could be it could be romantic it could be action it could be scary it could be funny whatever but it just has to fit that mm -hmm. and i think i've got a pretty good mix of that here okay yeah i was really struggling with this whole thing narrowing it down because i had all these movies like i don't know what i'm gonna do because i you know i've talked about so many of these movies already mm -hmm. so i don't want to be redundant over and over again and then you said about the drive-in thing right and it clicked i was like okay i got my five Right. That really helped me. And I did the same thing where it had to be, I decided it had to be at least over a million dollars budget oh, wise. Okay. 
to make it into it. So I I know a million these days may not seem like a lot, but in the 80s and 70s and money. stuff, it was a <laughs> lot of money. Or the 70s, yeah. Because yeah, was... I think you mentioned one to me that I know for sure is in the 70s. It is in the 70s. Yeah. So, and it was in, well, we'll talk about it later. Yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so th- there's all this veto. What What is your criteria? Uh, so mine was it had to be in the 90s and something that I saw in the movie theater, at least for my top five anyway. Some of my honorable mentions I didn't actually see. The yeah, I'm not. But, honorable mm. mentions are different. Yeah. yeah. But definitely in the 90s at the movie theater and it had to do with some kind of like science fiction action theme because to me that makes a blockbuster film. Okay. So no comedies or anything like that. Okay. okay. Hmm. All right. That makes sense for you, Vito. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, what if it's a movie that's mostly like action, science fiction, but it has some funny shit in it? Oh, yeah, that's fine. But, but it can't like be a... like a flat out. It can't be like Ace Ventura or right, something. Yeah. Okay. You know, that's gotcha. a great movie. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah, but that it could be great. a good summer one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah mine, it has to be. Um, I also limited myself to it had to be something that I, one, I watch on my own. I'd go to. If I just flip right. the channel, I would stop and watch it over and over and over again. And it reminds me of summer. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a summer movie about summer, but it makes me think summer. But I think the there are some things that we all agreed on. And one of the main things is, to keep it really true, I think, to the topic is it has to be a movie that was released between May and like early. August. Yeah. End of August, early September. It has to be something that was released for the summer yes. movie going crowd. So it, you know, it could even be a movie about summer, but if it was put out in like November, it like doesn't count. Yeah, I had one I was looking at, but it, I looked it up and it came out in February. I was like, well, there's that one. <laughs> right, right. So it just, it, that was one of the things that we did stick to. Yes. Amongst all of us. Yeah, I mean, Vito, you mentioned like you have to go to the movie. You had to have gone to the movie's theater to see it and everything. I didn't have that criteria, but once you mentioned that and I looked at my list, I went, Oh, shit. All five of these I did see in the movie theater. And I didn't even like intentionally make it that way. Yeah. But I think that having seen it in the movie theater helped to make it special to me. It it, it, it added to the whole thing. Now, you didn't go to the theater that much. when you I were did younger. not. Growing up, I did hardly ever went to the movie theater. Yeah, so not one of mine did I see in a theater. <laughs> right. I saw them later. So Yeah. But so, if they ever show in a theater, you better believe it, I'm going. Right. Uh, yeah, right. And I think that's why it clicked for you, what I said. You exactly. Know? It's like if I had like, the I haven't got a chance to see these in a theater quality, and especially at a drive-in, because you think summer drive-in. Absolutely. I want to go see these like that. Yeah. All five of mine would just be fucking awesome in a drive-in. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, people out there, if you have a drive-in or you do anything like that and you're hearing this, I know you're not, but if it, by any by chance, chance, any chance, take note of our lists here because these are all the kind of movies that'll just reel them in. <laughs> and these are our personal list. You know, we know that like the, some obvious summer movies that we all think of, but that doesn't mean it necessarily made our list. Right. Yeah. Right. Because so, I know there's this isn't like an all time best summer movies or the most successful or like, right. you know, because I know there's a few that people consider to be like the be all end all ones. And yes. you know what? They're they not, should be. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I, I agree. I'm not saying they're not great. But movies. that doesn't mean they made our list. Right. All right. So you guys ready to get into this list? Let's do it. All right. And as usual, we'll start with Vito and we're going to go with number five. All right. So number five came out on May 20th, 1998. Okay. It grossed $44 million opening weekend. Wow. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. It's from Roland Emmerich and Dean Devlin. Okay. It's called Godzilla. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> really? <laughs> Holy shit, I didn't see that one coming. No. Huh. Yeah, because I we don't know. We've talked about this generally, but we didn't like tell each other like our lists. So this is still a little bit of a surprise. <laughs> you know, you mentioned Godzilla when we talked about this before. I thought you were kidding. <laughs> no, no. I actually like this movie a lot. Wow. Oh, okay. Apparently. And I was pretty excited to see it in theater, man. Okay, I did not see this in the theater. Mm-hmm. I saw it on video later yeah. and it was I don't think it <laughs> <laughs> quite the same impact. I mean, you're so this probably is probably not. You're talking about this is the Matthew Broderick one. Yes. Oh boy. Okay. Mm. <laughs> so tell me, tell me about it. Why? Why does this make number five? So it's it's Godzilla. So obviously it's going to be a kick-ass movie. This one is like jam-packed with action. I love. I actually like the design of Godzilla in this movie. Okay. A lot of people don't. 
Yeah, it was a little different. Yeah, it was a little different. Matthew Broderick was a weird choice for this film, I will admit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some of the dialogue and stuff is really corny, and the jokes don't always land how they should. That's a but, lot of fish. Yeah. The- <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, okay, sorry. Go but ahead. But it, it's super fun, man. And I love like the ending with the Madison Square Garden and the little yeah. dino babies and stuff. and Total <laughs> Jurassic Park ripoff, but uh, yeah, it was fun. No, I mean, it It makes sense for you. Because <laughs> I was, what, uh, 16? Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, okay. I had just turned 16, actually. Yeah. Was, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. that makes sense for you. I think, yeah, and you know what, to be fair, if I would have been closer to age, because some of these ones I, I'm sure I'd feel different about if I had been older when I would have seen yeah. them, you know? Uh, that makes sense. It's a fun movie. I'm not. Yeah, I if if we were ranking Godzilla movies, I'm no, sorry. No, this would not be up there. No. But as far as you know, my criteria in the summer blockbuster genre, whatever you want to call it, this this made it in there. If you told me that the the drive-in down the way, if they were that like, dude, they're showing Godzilla '98, you know, this this weekend, like, let's go. I'd be like, fuck yeah, absolutely, right. let's go. That'd be fun. <laughs> so okay, that's cool. Yeah. I'm done with that. All right, so Godzilla. Nice surprise. Yeah, that was a surprise. I was <laughs> not expecting that. All right, Megan. Yes, so I went with a June 2003 movie that boxed office the first um, $654 million. Holy shit. Yeah, well, their budget was $140 million to make this movie. Damn. Still. And it's the first Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, okay. Curse, Curse of the Black Pearl. So. That explains it. Yeah. I love those movies, especially the first one. It got me a hook, line, and sinker. Uh-huh. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have a feeling you're going to make me use that that sound effect a lot. I, yeah, you really are going to need that <laughs> quite a bit, actually. So, I don't know. I mean, Johnny Depp is Jack Sparrow. No, it's classic. amazing. Classic. Classic. Kira Knightley. I like Kira Knightley. Um, Orlando Bloom. Yeah, I like Orlando Bloom. I love the cast. I love the time period and the dress and pirates and undead. And it's <laughs> going after gold. You know me and treasure hunts. <laughs> right. That makes sense. So. Yeah. I, I, I just adore these movies and it's a perfect summer movie for me. It is. I would never have even thought of that movie. It's funny because I saw that at the theater. Did you? When it came out. Great at the mm, theater. Great at the theater. I can imagine. It was so, so much fun seeing it at the theater. And I was a really, really big fan. I think because each sequel I felt less enthused about. Yes. Unfortunately, that sort of tainted my initial feeling about that movie. Because if you would have asked me after Pirates first one first came out i would have been like dude that's one of the fucking greatest movies like i loved it yeah but you can't let the sequels do that because you can say the same about indiana jones or uh, the mummy not, no not to the same level as with pirates pirates was a the the sequels were a real letdown and compared that first movie is so head and shoulders it is i mean the mummy returns is not as necessarily well in some ways it is in some ways it's as good or maybe even better well the second one's really good but the third one with the different oh, evie even, fuck that yeah. oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's no. terrible or the oh. You know, we don't speak of that one here. Yeah, we, we, yeah right. <laughs> but no, that that's, doesn't exist. Yeah. yeah, no that that's that is a great choice. I would never have thought of pirates, but absolutely yeah. excellent drive-in type movie. Yeah, I would kill for that one. Somebody bring that to the drive-in because I want to go see it. All right, cool. Well, my number five is uh, it's 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 action, but it's more kind of like drama little romantic all that kind of bullshit (laughs) but you know what it's got it's got righteous brothers music it's got badass fucking jets in it and it's got val kilmer and tom cruise getting all up in each other's fucking face fucking just bro attitudes at each other (laughs) it's a movie that came out may 16th 1986 just as i was finishing up eighth grade you know what it is Top Gun. Talk to me, Goose. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, she's lost that love and feeling, Goose. No, she didn't. No, I hate it when she does that. Sorry. I, <laughs> I, I fucking love this movie. I mean, I, I, admittedly, 
it was my parents that really wanted to see this movie because my dad was loves his planes. All was, was all about anything planes and jets and all that kind of stuff. Wanted to be in the Air Force, all that kind of stuff. Couldn't be, but they were the ones. And then my, I think my mom liked Tom Cruise. Well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was yeah, she, she was a big fan of Tom Cruise and everything. So I went with, and I think because of when it came out, it had that fucking. I, I don't care. People can make fun. It had that badass fucking soundtrack. Oh, yeah. Fucking Dude. sore core to the max. Dude, right? sore core. <laughs> Absolutely fucking right highway. Up Larry's alley right there. <laughs> highway to the danger zone. You know, <laughs> me and the boys and Take My Breath Away by Berlin. Like, just an incredible, like I said, Righteous Brothers, which was, you know, favorite since childhood. Amazing soundtrack. Amazing cast. Uh it, it was just it was one of those perfect movies for that time. I was I was just 13 years old, mm. you know, really, really getting into girls and stuff and having a romantic streak in me and all this <laughs> and, you know, and digging it. I, and I thought, I mean, he was an asshole in it, technically. Yeah. But but I thought Val Kilmer was pretty fucking cool. Like, I kind of agreed with him. Because everybody's like, oh, you know, Iceman's like the bad guy and Maverick, like that's our hero. And it's like, Maverick's kind of reckless. Maverick's a reckless dick. Yeah. With a with a chip on his shoulder and fucking Iceman, like he's all fucking business. He's a badass motherfucker. I'm a big Val Kilmer fan. That dude, (laughs) that dude, he's awesome. I mean, that movie just screams summer to me. Absolutely. Like that's 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 in my honorable mentions. Yeah. I couldn't not have it somewhere in there. Right. Right. Yeah. So. That oh okay, that's yeah that's great so that's okay at least I'm not alone on no this. you're not alone <laughs> that is definitely a summer movie to me but yeah so it it meets it ticks all the boxes now it's not necessarily my favorite movie you know what I mean like even some of my uh, my honorable mentions might be movies that I feel a little bit more affinity for than mm-hmm. this one yeah but like I said. Just coming up with that perfect playlist, so to speak, of summer drive-in f- movies that make a perfect day or a perfect night, this would be in there. So Nice. Cool. I agree. All right. We're off to a good start. Yeah. Took us three years, but God damn it, <laughs> here we are. Let's see where number four takes us. Yeah. Maybe. All right. Speaking of, so we are at number four. So this movie came out on July 2nd, 1997. Okay. It grossed fifty one million dollars on opening weekend. Fifty one million, okay. Okay. And what year? Nineteen ninety seven. Ninety seven. I'm trying to figure out knowing you what this is good. Okay. It's got Will Smith in it. Oh, okay. It's got Tommy Lee Jones in it. Yep. Yeah. It's none other than Men Bl- in Black. Black. Yes. Fucking awesome nice. movie. <laughs> I didn't that was a summer blockbuster, yeah. huh? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Dude, Will Smith was on fire back then. As a he really guy. was, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> how, how many movies are we going to see him in? Uh, two. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I figured at least oh, two. Oh, I think we're all going to be <laughs> we're all going to be talking about some Will Smith, man. <laughs> I mean, Will Smith was one of the kings of the fucking blockbusters. Fuck yeah, he was, dude. Rightfully There's so. There's comedy in that for sure. There is, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's what's great about Will Smith is like he can like on a dime he can go from being fucking hilarious to suddenly getting like really intense and serious and dramatic and everything. Like he's he's got pe- it all, man. People he's don't awesome. take and he's got the looks. Yeah, yeah. yeah he <laughs> people don't take him seriously enough. You know what I mean? It's the ears. Well, it's yeah, and the Fresh Prince, I think. Absolutely. But he did some dramatic stuff in that also. Yeah, so. he was amazing yeah. in that. Yeah. Such a great That's show. True, y'all. One, of the, one of the greatest sitcom shows ever was Fresh Prince. <laughs> I agree. Was great show. <laughs> greatest theme song ever. Yeah. yeah. I can't I can't argue with that. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, okay, yeah, when did you say this came out? So July 2nd, 97. Wow, July 2nd. I don't know why I never associated this. You know, because Men in Black, the first one, that's a fucking great movie. I, I just personally never thought of it as a summer movie. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think more fall. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, and I, I saw it at the theater. So obviously I saw it in the summer, but for some reason it didn't resonate with me that mm-hmm. that's what it is. I'm not knocking it. That's yeah. that's great, <laughs> but uh, wow. Okay. Anyway, 
Yeah, at this time I was super into UFOs and aliens. So this movie is at, like, at that at that time. Yeah, not unlike and, now. And, and, unlike yeah. now, but that was like my heyday. <laughs> like I was like at the peak of that shit back then, you know. Because I just got on the internet like a little bit ago, so that's all I did was just research oh fucking aliens and UFOs. <laughs> so Vito was just, like, <laughs> "Oh my god, this internet! It's like having a library in my home. <laughs> <laughs> like it's all over now." <laughs> All I'm gonna do is look up UFO conspiracies and and fucking download illegally download Cannibal Corpse albums. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? <laughs> I actually did not get into illegally downloading albums for some reason. Good. So <laughs> good for you. <laughs> My friends did it for me. I just yeah. never did. It. Oh, <laughs> you just pirated off of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I was too busy playing Doom on the fucking PC, man. Oh, okay. You were a Doom kid. Yeah, I totally. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Anyway, yeah, so, and then just the idea that this huge, like, cockroach monster, like, inhabits some dude's body and uses him as, like, a suit and goes around <laughs> Earth is just, it's so fucking cool. And I didn't realize this was based off a comic book series. Yeah. Oh, I just, really? Yeah. I just thought it was a movie. And I found out, like, way later it's based off a comic book. I was like, oh, that's kind of weird. But- yeah, dude, all the action is great. All the weapons and the gadgets and stuff they have is just... Right. How damn cool is that, man? And Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith have, like, the perfect chemistry. Where Tommy Lee is, like, the straight man asshole dude, and Will Smith is, like, the chipper upper dude, and they just work so well together. Right. That's and one- then who who played... It Was it Vincent D'Onofrio? Yes, he played, like, the cockroach. Yeah, I think people forget that sometimes. Yeah. Man, talk about another guy that's got a wide berth of roles, you know, when mm-hmm. you think about everything from private pile in yeah. uh him in full metal jacket you know doing that and then being this goofy fucking <laughs> bug alien guy and everything like that that dude's awesome man then to law and order criminal intent <laughs> and then oh, playing, Jurassic and, world <laughs> and then yeah and then uh kingpin and daredevil mm-hmm. i mean like just yeah that's right think about how yeah. different all those roles yeah. are man yeah so that's that's a qu- yeah ticks all the boxes came out in july B- big blockbuster, lots oh, yeah. of action, Huge. lots of humor and just craziness, and a big cast, man. All right. You're doing real good, son. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as he said that cockroach with within a human body or whatever it yeah. was, it's remind me of Doctor Who. It's like, it's cool when they do it, but in Doctor Who, it's terrible. Yeah. Oh, God. Like with the Sladeen and yeah. stuff. Oh. That's one where they're in like Parliament or something. And yeah. They're changing the closet. It's, it's, I, that's one of the yep. few new Doctor Who's I've seen. Oh, dude. And literally. Dude, why? That and, one. And literally, that is in my top five Worst. most yeah. hated Doctor Who. Like yes. it, that is not a good representation of that show <laughs> at, at all. all. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Anyway, all right, <laughs> moving on. That that was yeah, that, that great choice, man. What about you? What's your number? Four? Um, I went with one that's maybe not so obvious. This is my June nineteen seventy nine movie. June nineteen seventy nine. Okay, June oh, it's that one. Okay, yeah, okay. it's that one. Its budget was one point six million, and it grossed seventy million in the box office. This that's... was a number one hit in Canada. <laughs> For a long time, because it, it first came oh. out in Canada, and then it eventually came out here, and it was a number one hit here, so, too. So, uh, big, big old hit in the uh, Canadian summary. Eh? A, yeah. 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 Okay. That's so funny. I had a conference call with somebody at work, mm-hmm. and he's in Canada, and he actually used that accent. I was like, oh, it's real. They really talk like that. <laughs> oh, it sure he's like, he's like, a shit boat, is. A boot, a I was like, oh, my gosh, say it again. <laughs> yeah. So, what, what is this? What is your <laughs> number four, a boot? It, it, it is a boot, a meatballs. <laughs> meatballs. Meatballs. <laughs> wow. Okay, that's... <laughs> It's going way back. Here we're expecting Vito to throw the curveball. Yeah, I got a curveball there. Sorry. Meat. But I watched this so many times. This is one of Bill Murray's first major roles being a lead character. Right. Um, I just, I saw it was, I was really young, probably before I knew, got most of the jokes. I was just going to say. That's... <laughs> but I watched this all the time. It huh. cracked me up. The him, they kept messing with the camp president or whatever he was, Morty. Yeah. yeah. Put him out on rafts and <laughs> on flagpoles and keep screwing with them every time. Yeah. I loved it. It's cracked me up. And the, the, That's has not... the romance has got yeah. young teenagers falling in love and, yeah. you know, the, the rivalry, sports rivalry and stuff like that. You know, 
because I'm not competitive at all. <laughs> Can't imagine where I got any of this from. <laughs> oh my god, you're so fucking you're competitive about fucking everything. I really am. It's ridiculous. <laughs> you wonder why I got so mad and playing fucking Mario Kart with you. <laughs> you <sighs> you're still s- salty about that. <laughs> <laughs> Appropriately enough. Yeah. I was hearing that in my sleep for weeks after that. Ugh. Anyway. <laughs> but obviously it's about summer camp because I never actually got to go to summer camp. Not that I know if I really wanted to or not because being outside and the heat and the, I don't know. Isn't don't that what you did every day as when you were growing up in Oklahoma anyway? Yes. <laughs> well, then. So why would I want to go away to camp and do it? <laughs> because at camp you had all, first of all, you had a bunch of other kids you could play with and do I stuff I was surrounded with. by kids. And you had all kinds of like activities you could do. You could go out. We on... made our own activities. Oh, okay, fine. We went down the creek and swam. All right. Well, had our own swimming pool. Well, excuse me. Rode our bikes all over the countryside. All right, <laughs> fucking hot shot. All right. So you had dodge you... snakes. You shoot good. horses. I mean, we had it all. <laughs> we had horses, four wheelers, and hay bales to climb on. And... We'd shoot horses, learn how to make glue. We did all of it. <laughs> See. <laughs> I don't know what camp could have did for me. <laughs> well, me being a, in a, a about as urban. Our city folk here. <laughs> yeah. I grew up on the south side of Chicago. We only dreamed of having that lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> you guys had a whole camp just to go do that crap. Well, the funny <laughs> thing is. Life. Like a way of life. <laughs> yeah. Did you go to camp? I did, but it wasn't like a, a go away for like the month camp. It was like, hey, this place camp. is five minutes from your house. You you get picked up after. That's what yeah. I did. So, oh, yep. Okay. I did the same yeah. thing. I went to like a day camp thing over at Cal Park mm. and everything. A bunch of ghetto kids. <laughs> <laughs> boy, oh boy. All these fucking ghetto kids. The, my favorite story real quick from that is one day I was there and two of the kids got into this fight. <laughs> I was like around 10, 11 years old, right? These two kids got in this fight and the one kid, he had really curly yellow like blonde hair right and he was real slender and he had this long face and he had this long nose right and i mean he was just kind of i don't know he was he was okay but he was he was kind of he was kind of a dick like he had like this snarky attitude and he ended up getting in a fight with this other (laughs) this hispanic kid and one of the counselor guys came up and was like yeah, I'll knock it off. What's going on? And he was like, oh, he's starting shit with me. And he's like, no, I didn't. This was all you. And he was like, man, you shut up. And then the other kid said to the kid with the long face, he goes, shut up, you stupid Ziggy. <laughs> and then the best part was it occurred to all of us. Oh, yeah. That motherfucker looks like Ziggy. <laughs> and we never realized it. We were like, holy shit. He is a stupid Ziggy. <laughs> yeah, that kid left after like a week. Oh, yeah. Man, because <laughs> then everybody it. was like, fuck you, Zig. You know, it's <laughs> like, <laughs> well, he acted like a jerk and he deserved it. <laughs> no, he didn't deserve it. It's not cool to call people names. But he did look like, he looked like a really skinny Ziggy. He did. Anyway, that's what I gleaned from summer camp. That, All right. <laughs> that and one of the counselors turned me on to uh, Pink Floyd and The Doors. Yeah, okay. that's how I discovered all that stuff. Probably because he was a fucking stoner, I would guess. <laughs> you know, I was like, yo, dude, you like you like music? Because I was in Kiss and all that shit. He was like, you should listen to The Doors and Pink Floyd. I'm like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But anyway, yeah, you missed out. I missed out. That's okay. Yeah. But you got to live vicariously through meatballs. Yes, I did. Okay. Well, my number four is uh, a little movie. All my, almost all my movies are from like the middle of the 80s, 85, 86, all okay. that stuff. This one is a movie that we've talked a little bit about. I'm pretty sure all three of us are considerably big fans of it. Came out July 3rd, 1985. If you can't remember, then you just, you gotta, you gotta go back in time. Okay. It is a movie called Back to the Future. Okay. <laughs> no, you don't like Back to the Future? Uh, I do. I like it. It's just not one of my go-to movies. So. Uh, okay. But I can see how it's a, a summer movie. Oh, man. With this, that summer, I mean, you guys were too young, you know, but like I said, I was, I was in, you know, junior high age or whatever. That movie was just like so exciting that summer. Mm-hmm. Like we'd never seen that kind of like effect before with the DeLorean and the, I mean, you look at it now and I know it's quaint, but at the time 
the fucking time flux capacitor and shit, like in the way it did that and getting up yeah. to 88 miles an hour. Like that was fucking exciting, man. Mm-hmm. And the way, and just the whole way they did it, Michael J. Fox was like on top of the world. He was so happening and he was a man. I know that they had the other dude that was supposed to be. I was going to say, Stoltz. he wasn't the first choice, was he? Yeah, Eric Stoltz, who I really like. I like Eric Stoltz quite a bit in other things he's been in and stuff. But. They made the right choice getting rid of him, sorry, Eric, and get Michael J. Fox because that was the role that Michael was born to fucking play. Clearly, because he had to go back in time and make sure that he got <laughs> born. Yeah, to do it. <laughs> you know, and everything. Everything. I mean, come on. That that movie, It to me, that movie just screams like good times, summer being in the theater, being at a drive-in, the, the music, fucking Huey Lewis in the news. <laughs> And then some Johnny Be Good at the end with complete with the Eddie Van Halen fucking crazy solo at the end. All that stuff. Christopher Lloyd as one of yeah. the greatest, greatest movie characters of all time <laughs> with Doc Brown. Biff. Oh, yeah. I, d- d- I mean, oh, my God. And even McFly, George, George McFly. Dude, we used to, we would walk around, me and my friends after we saw that movie. I can't tell you how many times we'd go up to each other and grab each other just and go, hey, you, take your damn hands off her. <laughs> <laughs> just like all like that. Like, just all <laughs> the shit we latched on. I to. still use the pickup line, you're my density. I mean, yeah. destiny. <laughs> right. <laughs> doesn't go over so well. I was going to say, that explains a lot, Vito. <laughs> they're looking, yeah, they're looking at Vito going, density, that's about right. Yeah. There's a lot of density going on there. But anyway, yeah, I mean, to, to me, this is just one of like the, the all-time quintessential, especially for the 80s, quintessential fucking summer blockbuster movies man you know it's it may not be as bombastic as a men in black oh, fantastic like, <laughs> <laughs> you are so stuck in the 90s man. you're like what shaggy you don't fucking lo- you don't rock some fucking shaggy bro come on next top five summer albums of the 1990s <laughs> dude <laughs> bombastic simply fantastic <laughs> Oh yeah, oh, God. <laughs> Megan hates that yeah. fucking sound sound effect. But anyway, so Back to the Future for me, that's one of those ones. If it's in the summertime and it's beautiful weather out, eight o'clock at night, get me a pizza and some soda and you know some snacks, snacks, and then we just sit around and fucking, you know, you tell me all oh, Back to the Future's on. It's like fuck yeah, I'm gonna watch that. That's perfect. So. That's why I made my number four. All right. Interesting. Solid, Solid as a rock. Yep. Sorry, little Ashford and Simpson for you. <laughs> Speaking of 80s. All right. So that brings us, we're, we're midway through. That brings us to number three. So my number three came out on July 1st, 1998. 98. Opening weekend, it made $36 million. $36 okay. million. Dollars. <laughs> okay. <laughs> from a guy named Michael Bay. Oh, fuck. It's got a star-studded cast. Yeah. It's about space and meteors and asteroids crashing into the Earth. Oh. It's none other than Armageddon. Fucking nice. Armageddon. I forgot about that. We God talked about it. I still it. forgot about it. I totally <laughs> forgot about that, dude. Damn. That, I'm glad it's in your list. Yeah, me too, because I, I, I'll speak for myself at least. I think that, yeah, that, that's, that's an honorable mention for me. It's not on my list as an honorable mention because totally I forgot about it. But totally yes, forgot about I it. I love but that movie. Yeah, when it it's came great. Out. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. It's not my favorite space disaster film from that era. Mine is Deep Impact, but oh. Armageddon like crushed it at the box office, dude. Well, Deep Impact. <laughs> Here's the difference between Armageddon and Deep Impact. <laughs> Armageddon, happier type of ending. Deep Impact, mm, not, so not so much. <laughs> <laughs> You not so much. No, Deep yeah. Impact's definitely a downer. Oh my but god! But it's it's such a like a dramatic film. It's it's great, man. I just wish there was more like space, yeah, disaster scenes in that film. But anyway, Armageddon. <laughs> I I mean, again, I'm uh, what am I? Uh, Sixteen or so? Yeah, yeah. So I uh, dude, space, asteroids, destruction of the entire Earth. Like this is all in my wheelhouse at that age, right? So Big I'm thinking, nasty bugs. yeah, seriously, it's like, all right, I'm totally going to see this in the theater, and I was definitely not disappointed. Had all the action you can ever 
possibly want from that time period. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't make sense. It's not scientifically accurate at all. But who gives a shit, dude? No. It's Armageddon. It's a fun goddamn time to watch that movie. The 90s were not about no. technically <laughs> accurate. Whether and and the more the more uh big and bombastic and uh blockbuster it was, the less real it was cuz yeah, Armageddon or Titanic or Jurassic, all those things, like they're not fucking even close to, <laughs> to being accurate and real and scientifically well, correct. That's why we love the movies. And I agree. Yeah, exactly. You because have to be scientifically realistic. I really, kind of, I, even say I that. kinda I kinda don't want it to be because right. that's that's how it's escapism. I don't care. Yeah. I don't want this shit to be the fucking the day after. Right. Or something like that. That oh, movie. This really happen? What? That movie <laughs> scarred the shit out of me. Like, <laughs> like seriously. I was. I signify the day after from when my childhood ended. How about that shit? That's deep. That is deep. It's fucking true. I think about that anytime the day after comes on, like on some documentary thing, and I'm just like. That's when it all changed. <laughs> That's some deep impact right there. Yeah, it was, yeah that, that fucking ABC made for TV movie had deep impact on Larry. That's for sure. Because I was just like, oh, the world is horrible. <laughs> Prior to that, it was all like Marvel superheroes and Star Wars and Jolt soda and fucking Doritos and riding my bike and all that shit. <laughs> and then I found out about nuclear War. destruction. <laughs> 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 Mutually assured destruction it was like, oh, that's okay. Great. Armageddon doesn't have the big bugs in it, does it? It's the, what am I thinking? Has big bugs in it? You're thinking of that other one that he yeah. likes. Starship Troopers? Starship that's Troopers. It. Yes, I'm mixing the two together. No, yeah, that's not even on my list. I wonder if that even came out in the summer. I thought it did. Yeah, I didn't. Oh, check. you oh, fucked oh, up. Son. Totally fucked up. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> son of a bitch. But uh, no, Armageddon is the one with Bruce Willis, mm -hmm, where they have to drill in the middle and yeah, yeah, and Liv, put the bomb in there or something. Liv Tyler, right? Yep. Liv Tyler's, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and, uh, ben uh, Affleck. Ben Affleck. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, that was a real good movie. I just stuck the bugs in there too. <laughs> If they would have stuck bugs in there, Vito would oh, be like, yeah. that's my number one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, that's man. A good one. That is a real good yeah. one. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned it because, like I said, honorable mention for me. All right, Megan. Yeah. Well, I have possibly another curveball, but I love this one as a kid. Came out of June 1989. Um, had an $18 million budget. Okay. And made $130 million in the box office. Oh. And it is a little tiny movie called Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, uh, nice <laughs> Megan with the puns there. A little tiny <laughs> movie. <laughs> I adored this movie. And I just recently rewatched it on VHS of all things. Nice. Oh, wow. <laughs> it looks terrible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's fucking VHS. Of <laughs> course VHS. it does. Oh, my God. It, it looked so terrible like, back so then. How did we watch this? <laughs> it's not even watchable anymore. But the movie stood up. I still loved it and laughed at it. Okay. Love it. Again, teenage romance. I wanted to be that teenage girl so incredibly bad. <laughs> it wasn't even funny. I like tried to mimic her and wrap myself up in the phone cord and Oh wow. Totally. Fall in love and you know write an ant. <laughs> write an ant. <laughs> write around a, on an ant. Auntie. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um the bee, right around on a bee. Yeah. It's so cool. And the dog collar. I mean, come on. Such a great film, man. Yeah, Love it one. really is. You like Honey, I blew up the kid? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I like that one too. Yeah. And the first one's obviously better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Then there was the TV show. Was there? There was a TV yeah, show. Yeah, there was a TV show. I'm, oh, Lord. It that. didn't last very long. <laughs> 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 Oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah, that, I can only imagine. I'm sure the special effects of the TV show were fucking spectacular. <laughs> oh. I love the neighbor dad. Yeah. And May, his wife. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, it's a great movie. I Again, it's another one that I'm guilty of. I did not realize that was a summer blockbuster. I didn't know that came out in the summer. It always reminds me of summer because they're leaving on their summer fishing trip. Right. So, going to the mall. Is, it was perfect for me. I was turning 9, 10. I was you know, getting up there, so I was like, perfect for me. You're listening to the Prescribed Films Podcast Network, home to hundreds of hours of free podcast entertainment. The shows on this network all have a common goal, 
providing you with the best discussions about movies and other forms of entertainment media. The PFPN hopes to fill your ear holes with audio joy. Visit our website with links to all the other amazing shows at www.thepfpn.com. Thanks for listening. Well, my number three, we've already kind of had little hints and everything to it. It's my only movie from the 90s. It's a little movie that came out on July 3rd, 1996. Celebrating our day of independence. (laughs) Yep, none other than Independence Day. Nice. Man, and let me just say this too before I go on. All five of these movies in my list, depending on my mood that day, the 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 order of them is kind of nebulous because realistically to sit there and go, oh, my God, Independence Day is only number three. Dude, tomorrow it could be number one because <laughs> all five of these, that's what I said. All five of them are ones that it's like I, I I'd want to watch all five of them in the same day. You know what I mean? Like in the same weekend, like marathon. They're all up there. Independence Day. That is to me, honestly, that is the all time greatest like summer blockbuster action film action film yes you know i mean that's not to say that other movies that i have at number two and number one don't qualify as actiony but i mean this is just it has everything it's got it, it's one of those movies that's got drama and it's got great humor in it obviously because oh, yeah. we we spoofed it to death <laughs> on our channel go look up those videos on our youtube channel those are fun they're pretty funny um <clears throat> it's got all it's got all that it's got uh family drama it's got romance it's got technical scientific stuff it's got will fucking smith in it it's got bill paxton in it it's got jeff, jeff goldblum, goldblum. <laughs> I mean, come on, <laughs> you know, it, Randy Quaid, like it's got this crazy cast and Judd you, Hirsch, yeah, it does it as Judd Hirsch in it. You thought he was only about fucking taxi and ordinary people, <laughs> motherfucker. He's an independence day, <laughs> you know, in all seriousness. Yeah, it's, it's one of those movies that I, re- so here's the thing. When that movie came out, it got a lot of hype. It kind of came out of nowhere in a way. Like a lot of people were like, whoa, what the fuck is this? You know, what, what is this movie supposed to be about? And it got a fuckload of hype. And there was, from a lot of people, a backlash against mm-hmm. it. There was a lot of people that looked at it like it was car- cartoony, you know, like it was so over the top. And they were right, though. I mean, they were right. It was extremely no, over the top. No, I think it was over the top. But that is what is charming about it. I think they made exactly what they set out to make. And it was like, let's just make the most over the top crazy. You know what we're going to do? Like, what's the fucking shit we've never done? Like, let's have Will Smith just punch a fucking alien in the face <laughs> while smoking a cigar and everything. Like, all right, yeah, fuck it. You know, in another movie, that wouldn't fly. This movie, we're fucking doing it. You know what else we're going to do? Like, what's some of the things you're doing? Let's just blow up the fucking White House. It's like, dude, you can't blow up the White House. Yeah, it's bitch, like, watch me. Right. <laughs> exactly. Like, there's all sorts of shit. Like, let's just nuke fucking New York City and stuff, you know, and, and have it fail, you know? Like, I mean... They did a lot. They took a lot of chances with this movie that did borderline. Um, no, it went over the borderline of just absurdity at times. But that's going back like what we were saying in the last ones. That's part of what makes it so fucking fun. Like, I don't watch the nuclear stuff and the White House being blown up and all this destruction. I don't watch this movie and get down like I do watching some of the other more serious things like that like this is just so much fun and you get you know exactly you fire up the grill you make some food you get a beer you sit down on fourth of july you watch fucking independence day and then you go out and you blow some shit up in the alley (laughs) that's what you do right (laughs) that is a true midwest american fourth of july yeah america (laughs) so yeah this i mean like this could have even potentially been number one but as it's sat Right now, it's right dead center in the middle, Independence Day. Nice. It's yeah. one of my honorable mentions, so okay. I definitely agree. Okay, cool. 
All right, moving right along. Dun, 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 dun. That could have been in there, too. Moving, moving, Yeah, moving. The, the Muppet Show. Yeah, moving right along. I think that was summer. Pretty sure it was. Eh. Anyway, moving along. Number two, The Dose. All right. So this movie came out on June 11th, 1993. Early. Okay, 93. What the fuck came out in 93? Hmm. Opening weekend was $47 million. That's pretty decent. Okay. Close to how many million years back in time that these things came from. Okay. So it's a movie called Jurassic. Oh, Park. sure. Oh. What the hell's wrong with me? What the fuck <laughs> else came it. out in 93? Well, that's in my honorable mention. Yeah, it is mine too. Dang it. I even wrote it down. June 93. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. So that's your number two. Yes. Okay. I saw this movie f- four times in the theater. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, dinosaurs. I was all about that shit when I was um, what eleven at this time. When you were uh, thirty nine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just changed in the past twenty eight years. No. Now. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one thing. If you folks haven't gathered from watching and listening to us, is like, you know, they keep talking about things when they were nine or ten years old, but it seems like they're exactly the same now. <laughs> It's because we are, yep. <laughs> and that's why this show exists. <laughs> yeah, dude, Jurassic Park. I mean, fuck. I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, it's it has one to of, be. Yeah, and it's. I think it grossed since the that time a billion dollars, something worldwide or some shit. Yeah, I mean that's insane. Well, it got re-released the theaters a couple of times. That's true, and I think it made number one again all those times, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> I would, man. We should so go see that in the theater. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know they're yeah. gonna, you know they're gonna show it again. And it, man, because you figure what it's twenty twenty one, so you know in two more years at least they're yep. gonna have some An big anniversary. Yeah. Big re release, and when they do, by gum, we're gonna we are be there. there. Fuck yeah. 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 I think next year the newest one is coming out, isn't it? Awesome. Yes. Yeah. yeah I think yeah. it is supposed to be out in twenty twenty two. Not the I, Fast and Furious crossover. I think this is just the, the Chris Pratt solo venture. Oh, goodness. <laughs> God damn it. I really want that Fast and Furious crossover. Going. Dude, I heard about that new Fast and Furious Oof. that just came out. I heard that that's a, that's a woof. Really? I yeah. heard go to space or something? Oh, this... I, I got to watch it. Do I, they really? That's what I is heard. Is that part... I know people this just... This is going to be a veto's going to come. like, oh my God, it's amazing. <laughs> Best one yet. And that'll tell me everything I need, I need to, know. to know. exactly. I, I never go see those movies in the theater, but I'll go to my friend's house and it'll be on TV and we'll start watching them. And I tell you, dude, I get sucked in. They're so dumb, but it's just... It's just entertaining. Yeah, you just drink a so beer and watch it and laugh and be like, oh my God, that was so cool. And then you forget what even happened 10 minutes after you yeah. finished a movie, but it doesn't matter. That's fair why enough. this is successful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. But at least... Jurassic Park, bringing it back to that. I mean, that you could do the same thing with that, but it's actually a good ass fucking movie. Yes. I mean, you could put it on right now, and I'm like, yeah, I'm down. Yeah. 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 Like it still holds up, man. The effects and everything still hold up because they mixed practical with some CGI to make it look a little bit prettier. They didn't rely on the CGI to do everything, everything. You know. Yep. You hear that, George Lucas? You motherfucker. Star Wars franchise didn't finally figure it out until the goddamn Mandalorian. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, look, this works. It's like, yeah, we've been telling you that for 30 years. <laughs> like, we don't want your bad CG bullshit. Ugh. And not only that, but this movie, like, I think started my love for Michael Crichton novels. Because okay. I hadn't read the book before this, but I read the book after that. I read the Lost World book yeah. and all of other Crichton stuff, and I just fell in love with this stuff. Mm. So this movie, I mean, yeah, anytime it's on TV, I'll sit down and watch it. Doesn't matter what part it's at. I got to watch it. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. a great Definitely choice. agree with that one. Mm-hmm. That should have, I mean, like I said, by all rights, that should have and could have been in this list, but some it couldn't It made be. the honorable mention. So. It, is my, it is my number one honorable mention. Okay. You know, like on a different day, this could replace one of these other ones possibly, so... Yeah, I mean, Easily. anybody who's familiar with Geeking Poetic knows we love our Jurassic Park. So, all right, cool. Megan. All right, so my number two yeah. is from August 1987. 97 or 87? 87. 87, okay. 87. It grossed $64 million at the box office with a $6 million budget. Little amazing Summer film 
called Dirty Dancing. Oh, fuck. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> the Dirty Dancing again. <laughs> oh. Patrick fucking Swayze. <laughs> Jennifer Grey, I love her. She got the big nose, so I made me think of me. I was like, all right. <laughs> she can get Patrick Swayze, so can I. <laughs> Nobody's putting me I in the corner. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I was always a sucker for the dancing. You know, favorite thing to watch on TV was, you know, professional dancing and mm-hmm. stuff like that. I loved it. I wish I, I wish I could do that. I want to do that someday. And so to see that and going to the summer Well, I mean, that's what the movie's about. Like that, yeah. I mean, it's, it's again... It is a summer movie. I was movie. seven. No, I get it. So it was like right up my alley. Is this the one where they outlaw dancing in the town or is that yes. Footloose? Okay. No, 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 that's Footloose. No, no that's, that's Footloose. footloose. No, I always get them mixed up. No, yeah. this is the one where <laughs> Jennifer, yeah, there was a lot of those in the 80s. No, this is the one but where- But she was like forbidden from dancing I see. by okay. her dad. Okay. Well, it was and she- And he thought she ended up pregnant and it wasn't hers. She was trying to help somebody and he, he was a real shithead. The, kind of. That's, that's a real <laughs> fucked up version of what happened actually. <laughs> <laughs> she no she he her father thinks that Patrick Swayze's character got another girl pregnant got what, what was it like I forget Penny. Kelly Preston or whoever it was yeah. that played that role thinks that he is the one that got her pregnant because he mm-hmm. the the dad was a doctor mm-hmm. and so they had to get him involved to help her cuz she was really sick and he was all, and and Johnny or whatever his name was mm-hmm. uh, Patrick Swayze took took the blame for it but it wasn't actually him that did it. He was. It really, was the guy that the other sister was seeing, and he was. A yeah, that the doctor, bag. the doctor dad thought was like a really good guy, and it's like that's the one that's knocking up all your fucking chicks, man. So all of them. <laughs> and he figures it out at the end, you know. He finally the douchebag dad figures it out at the end, but he doesn't like a uh, baby hanging out with all of them because he feels that she's going to be, you know lured into this bad element because they're dirty dancing you know they're not just like doing the hop and everything they're all bumping and grinding and and all this and she learns how to dance and she gets she gets comfortable in her own skin finally and everything i'm not even the one that picked this fucking movie why am i explaining Wait, you're it you're doing great though yeah you know why you know why because it's a great movie with no. great music no and i'm sure because i'm sure my mother is going to be watching and or listening to this and it's her fault because she loved this movie and it was on all the fucking time i thank you oh it was always on so i had this movie drilled into my head <laughs> and i was not a fan i was not a fan of it i, I love jennifer gray jennifer gray is great I love the soundtrack of this movie. Mm-hmm. Excellent 60s music. I'm all about it. Love yes. 60s music and everything. Swayze's cool. I was, you know, I was cool to Swayze. Red Dawn, motherfucker. Fucking Roadhouse. <laughs> you know? Like, but there was just something about this particular movie. I think it was the time and how much it got crammed on my throat that it made me. Because I love Grease. I love Grease too, as we've already established before. Mm-hmm. I love Xanadu, all that shit. But something about Dirty Dancing just got under my skin, and I probably can deal with it more now as I'm older. But when I was like what fifteen or whatever when that oh, movie yeah. came out, I was fifteen and I was like full on fucking metal and punk, and I was <laughs> like, I don't want to fucking see and hear this anymore. But yep, this isn't every day about me. I play Dirty Dancing. Got it. Put on Dirty Dancing. Yeah, no, it it it's a perfectly logical choice. It makes For me, sense. Yeah, yeah, no, it it, it really does. I kind of wish that I had a different perspective on it because, like I said, it seems like the kind of movie I should enjoy. I just can't get past that fucking hula scene with the older fucking sister. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> God, that's like literally. Nails on a chalkboard. Yes. That's like one of the worst sounds ever. Oh my God. So <laughs> bad. So bad. I can remember. And and that was the other thing is my mom, because summertime and everything, when we got that on video and we'd be on our houseboat with my family and I couldn't get away. Mm. There was nowhere to go. It was just a boat and water, you know, <laughs> and there was nowhere to go. And I, so I'd go into like my other like little room. I had a little tiny little bedroom thing on the houseboat and I could just hear it through the fucking wall. I could hear And I'd just be like digging my nails into the. I would actually fast forward that part, to yeah. be honest. I didn't have the option. Yeah. I was not given the option. I'm sorry. 
But the dancing's amazing in that. Patrick Swayze is a bad motherfucking dancer, man. He was really good. And and he did that under major physical duress because yeah. he had like really bad problems with his with knees. knees or something, with, yeah. Yeah, because he actually and he had to keep like jumping and landing on his knees and shit. That like it was hurting him so because he was a trained dancer. He never put it in his resume for acting roles because he didn't want to be asked to do it because he had these injuries. He was he, he was like, I can't fucking do it. And they fucking found out and they dragged his ass into this movie. And he was like, all right, just don't make it hard on me. And they made it super hard. <laughs> like, OK, on him. we will. <laughs> and they like fucked him up like really bad, man. So that's why he's already dead. Thanks. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> <laughs> Keep sliding on your knees across the floor. You ain't going to be round no more. <laughs> <laughs> that has nothing to do with why he is no longer oh, around. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. Well, okay. So moving on to my number two. Yes. Now, this is definitely by far the silliest movie on my list and stuff. Okay. I, it's sillier than Independence Day. But that's a different kind of silly. This movie came out June 7th, 1985. It was perfect for me because I was 12 years old. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that the characters in this movie were supposed to be roughly right around that same age group, 12 to 13, something like the 12, 13, 14. It was a movie called The Goonies. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. I mean, dude. So <laughs> here's the thing. I love The Goonies, but... This isn't one of those movies. I mean, it didn't it didn't make my top 20 list when we did our top right. 20 movie favorite movies of all time. So this is not necessarily one of those movies where I'm like it's a fucking masterpiece. But for me, just like what you were saying about Dirty Dancing, for me when it came out, how I saw it, it's the first movie that I ever went to see on my own as a kid. I was 12 years old. My parents wanted to go see something else. Mm -hmm. And Goonies was showing next door and I knew a little bit about it. I didn't I wasn't all like invested in it But I'd heard of it and stuff and the main thing I knew about it was that it had fucking short round from uh, Indiana, Indiana Jones, Jones and the Temple of Doom in it and stuff I seen a couple commercials and I knew the Cindy Lauper song, you know from it the theme song So I was like, oh, okay, whatever this might be, you know, I'll I'll deal with it so my parents were like, oh, go to the theater, go by yourself and everything. And I was like, okay, cool. You know, so I went and sat in the theater all by myself and I watched this movie and I fucking laughed so much just by myself. The whole sloth thing and chunk and just like uh, Corey Feldman's character in it. I mean, there was so, so much. I thought the two at the time, because again, I was at that age. I thought uh, that I thought Steph and uh, the other one, uh, Carrie Green's character. I mm -hmm. thought both Martha Plimpton and Carrie Green. I kind of had like a little crush on both of them instantly. I was like, I want to hang out with those girls. They're fucking <laughs> awesome. You know, like I it was so, and same thing like you're always talking about. Like I was exciting. Like, holy fuck, they got this map and they're going through and they go through like the basement. And I'm like, this is the shit I fantasize about all the time. You know, like I want to find out there's some weird like trap door in like, you know, my neighbor's house. And I'm going to go into some underground tunnels and everything like that's the shit I thought about. And this was all here in this movie. And I just went from just kind of blindly going in to see this movie as a 12 year old and coming out and being like I'm fucking obsessed with this movie now <laughs> and I went back and saw it again with a couple of my buddies I was like you gotta go see this and we went and saw it again I bought the souvenir magazine from Jewel Osco where they came <laughs> remember when they would come out I think they still do when they would come out with like the souvenir magazines for like the big movies that would come out I bought the souvenir magazine and was reading you know like uh, man just all about it love this movie it's not one of those ones that now it that i relate to as much but it brings back the nostalgia of that summer for me of 85 especially i mean like that and back to the future uh i mean that's just that summer like it, that, i watch those two movies and it brings me back to that really good feeling you know what i mean of mm -hmm. like yeah, eating snacks, riding my bike in the summer, you know, drinking way too caffeinated fucking cola. <laughs> <clears throat> you guys remember Jolt Cola? Does yep. anybody at home remember Jolt? You don't know Jolt Cola? No, I don't know. Could you Jolt. imagine Megan on Jolt Cola? 
holy shit. Just hearing it makes me sick. Yeah, it, it does. It did make you sick. Okay. It didn't even taste particularly great. It always tasted flat to me. Yes. Yes. It had this soda that you would leave out. It just, it had that taste to it, but. It was so strong. Like, it was so strong, Cola. But the thing is, is that it had, like, umpteen way more amounts of caffeine in it. Oh, geez. And Even more so than, like, Mountain Dew or whatever was the big thing back then. I feel so bad for mine and my buddies, Steve's, and all my best friend at the time. I feel so bad for our fucking parents. <laughs> <laughs> because we would buy, we would go to 7-Eleven, like one of our moms would drive us to 7-Eleven and be like, and we'd go in, and me and Steve, in the summer, we would get 7-Eleven nachos okay. with fucking chili. We'd squirt the chili on there, too. That shit is so fucking awesome. It sounds awesome. It is so awesome. 7-Eleven chili cheese nachos, that, and we'd each buy at least one two liter of fucking jolt, and we'd drink that, eat nachos, and we would just be Bouncing off the fucking walls. I can only imagine you two. <laughs> no one, because you oh know Oh my Steve, gosh. You know that, me. Jesus Christ. We were just, that's where all the stupid shit came up with that I still talk about to this day. Things that we would come up with and do. Oh my God. And Goonies was right in there with it. You know what I mean? We, we were Goonies. We were those kids, you know? <laughs> we were just like little wannabe heavy metal versions of those kids, you know? So this movie, yeah. This movie is it, that's why I, I had. That's to be a great two. movie. It is. You know, I've only seen it a few times. Oh, really? Yeah, which is why it wasn't on my list. But it's, Vito, it is a good movie. Vito's it's a good choice. not a fan. It's not his kind of movie. No. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, again, had you been my age, you Probably. might have felt different yeah. about it. Because there were other movies. I was really there was that period because I think it was eighty five too when movies like Explorers came out. That's a great movie. Yeah, with uh, it was uh, River Phoenix, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Young River Phoenix and everything in it. Justin Henry, like that. That was, I, I loved all those movies with those groups of like you know three or four you know kids that would like get into some sort of adventure thing. And it's <laughs> like I was right at that age. I, that's what I wished for. I wanted to have that happen, you know. The closest I got was I, we started a band, <laughs> which was, uh, that was an adventure. Worst decision of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Here I am, you know, 40 years later, and uh, yeah, yeah, that's where it's at. But anyway, all right. So, you know what this means? We are we're at the end. The it end is that here. time. Yep, the end is nigh. Nice. Summer blockbuster number one. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's 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 the sound in Megan's head right now. Are you flipping me off? No, I got two fingers. Oh, now. you got two fingers. Hey, everybody, right. no, I'm not flipping. So off. you're giving me the British flip off. You're like sod off. You can read between the lines. <laughs> there you go. All right. Vito, dude, what is your number one? Dude, you're never going to believe this, man. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. I have a feeling I know what it is. July 3rd, 1996. It grossed $50.2 million in opening weekend. It is Independence Day. Wow. Wait, wait, wait. Whoa, wait. Whoa, wait. So, are you telling me that T2 is not on your list? Now, let's harken back if you guys want to rewind the tape. <laughs> I did say my top five had to be movies I saw in the theater. Oh. Did not see Terminator 2 in the theater. I don't know if I realized that or I remembered. I'm sure you told me, but I didn't remember that. If I, I Damn, it's good to know because if somebody would have like bet me on that, I'd have been like, fuck yeah, Vito saw that in the theater. No. Yeah, okay. really? But, what, you want to know what, what my number one honorable mention is? It's Terminator 2. <laughs> yeah. Well, of course. I mean, <laughs> What kind of list would I have if Terminator 2 is not on that list? <laughs> wow. You're like, I don't care what it yeah, is. It'll fit. It. <laughs> See, I wasn't even keeping track because I would because I know Independence Day had to be on your list. And I wasn't even thinking about it. It's like, well, Independence Day and T2. And she, he's only got one choice left. Holy shit. Okay. And he already told us there's two Will Smiths. <gasps> That's right. He did. Yeah. You sly <laughs> dog. This Will Smith was like a background extra or something in T2. Right? You know? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I wasn't even thinking about that. All right. Anyway. Uh, well, shit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what more can I say about this movie that 
everybody in the entire universe has said already. I mean, this is one of the greatest movies ever made. It's definitely one of the greatest, in my opinion, summer blockbuster movies ever made. Like, what I do you agree. Think? Mm-hmm. Summer blockbuster, I think, Independence Day. Yeah, that's sure. what I was yes, saying. absolutely. That's what I was saying. Yeah, if this wasn't just about personal favorites, if I was supposed to be guessing, like, like what do you just say, regardless of how you feel about it, you know, in comparison to others, like, yeah. what would you say is, like, the definitive summer blockbuster action movie thing? I'd be like, oh, Independence Day, yeah. mm-hmm. hands down. Yeah. Even we over T two, even over T two, you know, even if we weren't, get, I would, I would probably put T two as number two. If we were doing that, really? I would say Independence Day's number one. T two is a close second. Jurassic Park's third. Yeah. Jaws. Uh, well, we'll get into Jaws in a little bit. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But anyway, so go on, Vito. I'm shocked because neither of you had Jaws on your. We'll get into that. Okay. We haven't had our number ones we'll, yet. We'll, okay. we'll get we'll get into yeah. it a little bit. Oh yeah, that's right. I'm only my first number one. Yeah. yeah. Never mind. I'm sorry. You have two number ones. <laughs> I'm like, where are we? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, and yeah, I mean, I was what 14 at this time. Yeah. So Area 51, aliens, dogfighting spaceships with jets. I mean, dude, this is my kind of movie. Data even has a fucking yeah. appearance in Red it Spire. as a scientist. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's so damn cool. the The entire cast is stellar. Mm-hmm. I don't think you can replace any of these people with somebody no. else because it wouldn't work. No. Nope. And what sucks is this is the first Independence Day that I did not watch Independence Day on since probably this movie came out. You know what? I didn't really? either. And yeah. I usually always watch it, but this year, I don't know. We just didn't. I watched <laughs> Independence Day Resurgence about 30 minutes of that one, but I didn't see the original. <laughs> it was weird. <laughs> That's funny. You know what? It's funny you say that because I had every intention of watching Independence Day this year on the 4th, and I didn't. I didn't end up watching slackers. Anything. Yeah, yeah. Really, I didn't end up watching anything. Yeah, I we were actually, outside drinking. It was a nice day. You know out, what? So. To be yeah, fair, I I blame the pandemic <laughs> because I think that because after what happened last year, not being able to do anything, it was like this year. All I could think about was like, man, I want to get outside. I want to grill. I want to swim. I want to you know blow off some fireworks. Like I wanted to do all the outdoorsy stuff this year. And clearly so did all my neighbors, because holy <laughs> crap, the south side exploded. It, literally. Those it's people crazy. were just like, man, we bought all the fireworks. Like, it got, was, like the big ones. It wasn't even like the small ones. I think people, like the huge people, ones. Were, people were in my street, like two feet away from my goddamn car. Setting off the big ones like, like they the use like shells or whatever, like the, like the, the ones that the, 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 like the cities oh, use, oh, yeah. like, yeah, like oh, they do God. for like the Navy Pier fucking thing. <laughs> they yes. were shooting that off on my street. Jesus. Oh, there's one in the backyard, two houses down. Oh, it was man. insane. We actually drove up to Wisconsin to get fireworks. And gave no it. shit. Yeah. Did you? Well, yeah. see, I mean, I live walking yeah, distance so. to Indiana where it's legal, yeah. so. <laughs> Poor cops were driving around in circles <laughs> just doing like, nothing. They were like, we they're like, what are we? It, it was literally everywhere. It was like being in fucking Beirut or something, man. Like the, how much it was just <laughs> everywhere. Just everywhere like you turn. trying to see it all. Yeah, it's yeah, insane. it was. We were literally like, oh, 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 look at that one. No, 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 no I'm too busy looking at this one. It's like, holy shit, look at that one. We were busy going, woo. Yeah. <laughs> every, time, every time my neighbors would set off one of the really big <laughs> explosive one, we made sure that we all went, woo. Nice. <laughs> and my mom was getting so mad. She was so annoyed with us. She had it. Because, I mean, we literally did it, what, like... 80 times? Yeah, Jeez. something like that. While we were trying to play bags. We were doing nice. bag tossing and everything. Yeah. yeah. It was Dude, fun. I've gotten really good at bags, man. Oh. We were at Michelle's house. I got stung by a bee. And after <laughs> that, literally, I was nailing, like, every shot after every shot. I sucked before that. For some reason, I got, like, some superpowers. I was just going to say, did you get some fucking bee powers, like Peter Parker with I the did, spider? Right? Because since that bee sting, I've gotten really good at bags, dude. I'm, I'm like, doing, like, 20... Point games now. Wow. So yeah. Well, you weird. need to get him on your team, so maybe you can beat me next time. <laughs> Motherfucker, are you fucking serious? You hear this shit? <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. Because she teamed up with Luke and they beat me in Did Jess. It? Yeah. <laughs> barely. You barely, barely beat us. <laughs> Really, I, I got the last point. Luke did all the others, so. <laughs> but I'm taking credit for it. Okay. <laughs> well, when you when if you I'm making you come over to our our cookout in in August and everything, we're playing bags. All right, we're cool. All, we're sure <laughs> you know, Gary will probably be all about it. Yeah. He likes competing in that kind of shit. He's, you used to have a, a bags bar somewhere downtown where you can go and they'd have like tournaments. Yeah. I don't know if it's still around. But. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. 
Anyway, sorry. <laughs> sidetrack. Yeah, sorry. we're getting sidetracked. So, got, oh, see, that's why it's such a great movie because now we got all the summer stuff we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it and it just. I, I, so my point is, is that I think we're allowed this year to miss watching Independence Day because we needed to get out there and get out of the house and do yeah, it. it. Sounds but, like we all three spent the entire day outside. <laughs> yeah. But next year, we're watching that fucking movie. <laughs> and especially, like I said, please, somebody air it. Somebody put it on like a, in one of the drive-ins and shit. Even oh, if yeah. even if we got to drive like an hour or so, I'd be like, let's fucking go, man. Go see Independence Day at the fucking drive-in on Independence Day. That's some mad shit, yo. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be fucking the bomb. <laughs> so... Let's let's hope it happens. All right, Megan. Uh oh. So my number one is a gigantic movie from 1996. Mm. May um, box office was 495 million dollars. A lot of money. Budget was only 92. Hmm. What? Ninety-two dollars. Ninety-two million. Oh, okay. So I was gonna say that's a hell of a fucking. We can't even make this fucking show. Yeah, for they, Ninety-two dollars. They, they just actually went to Oklahoma and filmed during bad weather, so it was oh. the movie Twister. Uh, <laughs> Vito's like, oh god uh, damn it. Vito's like, you had me excited for a minute. <laughs> Tw- Twister. I mean, we talked. That was ninety-six. Ninety-six. Yep. Oh, wow. Yeah, May of ninety-six. I mean, we again, I talked about this one before. It's one of my favorite movies. It was in my top 20. It was my favorite soundtracks. I mean, great cast, good comedy in it, tornadoes, Oklahoma. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> cows. <laughs> <laughs> Flying cows. Another cow. I, I Romance. I just love this movie. It makes me laugh. Who folds the maps? Don't fold the maps. <laughs> Roll the maps. Okay. Where are we? John's Road. What is it? I don't know. I don't remember what it You're is. The, <laughs> it's your favorite movie. Not Bob's mine. Road. is like Bob's Road. I don't know where we are. Yeah, I don't know. So, I don't know where you are either. I, yeah, I don't know. I, lo- I just adore this movie. And obviously, it happens during middle of tornado season. So I think summer. So. It I makes sense. It. You grew up in that life. I did. You were 16 years old. I was. You had just moved away from there. I had. Yeah. So it made me even think about, you know, back home. Right. So, yeah, because that was, yeah, I moved here in 95. So it reminded me of being back home in Oklahoma. Sure. Which I missed desperately at that point. Right. So it was a huge culture shock for me oh, from small town, small town Oklahoma to... Small my, town Indiana? <laughs> uh, well... <laughs> Comparatively, compared to what I had, you know, where I can get to somewhere in ten minutes, as as opposed to having to drive half an hour just to get to a teeny tiny town. Yeah, here I can drive half an hour and be in Chicago. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she still went from living in uh, where was it? You lived in Oklahoma, Cleveland, Oklahoma, Cleveland, Oklahoma, not Ohio, (laughs) Cleveland, Oklahoma. (laughs) It always amazes me that those states have like the same city names, and they're like huge city names. It's like, can't you have thought something (laughs) else than that? You know? Yeah, or even if it was Cleveland, Oklahoma, didn't come first. I think it might have. Maybe Ohio really? stole it. Oh, yeah, but they own it. I mean, it's. What do you think of Cleveland? What do you think of Oklahoma? Oklahoma. Really? Well, man. <laughs> <laughs> duh. <laughs> it's a lost cause. More stupid Vito. questions. <laughs> <laughs> but my point I was going to get at is living in the small town in Oklahoma compared to moving to Maryville, Indiana, or Hobart, Indiana, where like the population is still like a couple hundred thousand yeah my, my class was over like 500 students as opposed to oklahoma where it's less than 100 and it was a huge shock for me yeah so i, I desperately missed oklahoma and strangely enough i missed the tornadoes dodging tornadoes left and right that doesn't surprise so. anybody <laughs> does it surprise you no 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 exactly well it surprised me okay <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah i i don't know i just love this movie we talked about it a gazillion times before, yeah. but I had to make my top ten or my top five. Yeah, they had to make your number one. No, number one, okay. numero uno. That is your numero uno. Okay, so my numero uno uh, is the oldest movie on my list. Okay, and I did see it at the movie theater a couple times actually, and it came out June twelfth, nineteen eighty one. Okay, made by two of still to this day the all-time biggest movie directors, none other than George Lucas and Steven Spielberg. Mm-hmm. It is a movie called Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yes. 
I'm so glad it made your list. Dude, I mean, it's it's fucking Raiders, man. I mean, like, this is... Uh, this is just it's it's the movie. I mean, like it, it it doesn't even necessarily have to be a summer movie, but it came out in the summer. It's kind of it's just got that vibe to it. Mm -hmm. It has that whole vibe like this is it's such a timeless movie, whereas I know you might be able to say that about some of these other movies. You might think Back to the Future or Independence Day and Jurassic have somewhat of a timeless nature to it. I feel like Raiders is like the most classic you know what i mean because it was designed to be like yeah. a classic movie mm -hmm. and even today i mean there, there's there's literally children today that see raiders and they're like that movie's great and think about that like that's tough man you know that's a tough thing to pull off it can be this is the kind of movie that can be some eight-year-old kid's favorite movie of the summer right mm -hmm. now even yep. though even though Indiana Jones is old enough About to be his years ago. <laughs> old enough to be his grandpa or great grandpa. Mm -hmm. That really says something about this movie. It has everything, everything. I still watch it to this day and find myself like feeling that like edge of your seat thing when he's trying to get away from the Nazis, mm -hmm. you know, towards the end and all that with the with the truck and the the fight outside that fucking airplane going around in a circle <laughs> with the German mechanic. Guy. I still like get into it and it. It just, it was probably the first movie that really gave me that feeling. Now, that's not to say it's the first movie that I saw that could qualify as a summer blockbuster, and we'll get into that in a minute, but this was the first one that I really felt like this is a summer blockbuster to me, even before I understood what that term meant. Mm -hmm. As a kid, it was like it represented it to me. Like this this movie just took over that summer for me. You know what I mean? Okay. Like me and my friends just spent that whole summer, you know, I my grand and my grandparents' fucking basement, because they had all kinds of crazy shit going back to the forties, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? I found a leather whip. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Such bad news. So I. How go, many kids went home crying? I was going to say, did you, did you hit yourself in the chin? Yes, I did. did. <laughs> yes, I did. I did exactly that. Yeah, I learned real quickly. You know, I never like cracked the whip, but I'd have it and just you know kind of swing it around. We'd kind of play pretend and everything. Uh, that whole summer, me and my buddy Dave Lesko sometimes watches the show. I mean, that's what we did. We just played Indiana Jones. I mean, hmm. we we you know. The, the, they had the comic books that came out that summer, you know, in conjunction. We read, you know, we had to go get to the comic books, you know. We did that. We played outside all summer playing Indiana Jones. The girl across the alley was, the, Chris was Marion, you know what I mean? And <laughs> and we take turns being like, I'm going to be Indiana Jones today. I mean, it it so represented that summer, and that was, that was a great summer. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So to me... That's it. That's kind of why that's like my number one because it goes back the farthest and the okay. deepest and, you know. Yeah, I had it on my list as well at one point. And then mm -hmm. I decided, you know what? Indiana Jones is a every time of the year movie for me. And that's why it got bumped. Right. Well, we're going to get into that. I definitely want to talk about that because we're going to get into honorable mentions. And here's the thing about the honorable mentions is that I think the honorable mentions kind of part of why they're honorable mentions, at least for me and I think for you guys, too, is that it steps outside of our parameters. But they yeah. th if we didn't have those parameters, they'd be right fucking up there. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Vito, what, what's what's your honorable mention? So I've got a couple here. Uh, number one, obviously, is Terminator 2 Judgment Day yep. because it's Terminator 2 Judgment Day. <laughs> um, I've got Blade from Okay. Blade. Ooh. Mm. Man, that's a movie that doesn't get talked about. No, enough. dude, I haven't seen it in a while. But I used to be fucking crazy about that movie. I just I vividly remember watching it in the theater and seeing that like one of the first scenes where they go into that dance club with that yeah. music playing and the blood just starts pouring down. Yeah. I was like, this is like the coolest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> and just thinking that there's this underground vampire like community that's like controlling the world was just right. such a cool idea to me you know <laughs> and i think that's what spawned a lot of the uh the superhero movies after that right oh it blade sure did, so did. Well it, and... it, it did help i mean because blade was the first one it was the first successful marvel movie <laughs> um and then what blade did was blade allowed the door to be open for x-men to get made 
And then that was very successful. That did very well. And they didn't expect it to do as well as it did. So then that opened the door for Spider-Man to get yeah. made, the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movie. And that did extremely well. And so that got that hall, that ball rolling and stuff. And yeah, so if it wasn't for Blade, we wouldn't have all this great shit we have now. And I didn't even know it was a Marvel property. I just thought it was a vampire film. I think and, it helped <clears throat> at the time that it wasn't known by a lot of people to be a, a comic book. A comic book yeah. And Wesley Snipes is such a fucking badass dude. Fuck yeah. I mean. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Uh, I've got Speed, June 10th, 94. <sighs> That's that's a fun one. <laughs> that was definitely, I think for that year, that was probably like the summer blockbuster. Yeah, that was a good one, dude. Uh, Batman Returns, that's a summer film, Ooh. even though it's basically a Christmas movie, but it came out in the summer, June uh, 16th, 92, right. actually. And that's the kind of thing, and we'll get into that, I know I'll get into that too, is that there's some of these that it's like, it may technically be a summer blockbuster, but for me it doesn't feel like a summer, yeah, Batman Returns does not feel, that's not a summer movie to me. Yeah. That's not one Christmas. that I, yeah, that's Christmas between Halloween and Christmas, yep. Yeah. Um, a couple other ones, like these aren't the most profitable ones, but I've got The Fugitive from 93. Yeah? You know, okay. to me that that's a really big summer movie. Sure, you know? it's just not it's not like the feel good hit of the summer kind of thing, yeah. you know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Contact from ninety seven. Oh, that's a good movie. <laughs> Another one that I don't think gets a lot of love that it should get. No, you know. But yeah, that's that's pretty much my honorables right there. Okay. All right, Megan, what about yours? Um, I think I got some of the heavy hitters in here. I got um, Jaws from June seventy five. Obviously, has to be in here. Right. <laughs> I mean, I think summer. That's what I think of. Right. Um, Jurassic Park. We talked about. Top Gun we talked about, Independence Day, obviously, we all agree that's like the yeah. number one. Um, but I also threw in Die Hard with a Vengeance. Not the first one, because that's clearly Christmas. <laughs> oh, Christ. With a Vengeance, because that's summer. Is that the airport one? No, that's the one um, where they're walking around with the sign on them. Where he has to keep doing all this dangerous the, shit yeah, this, to, yeah. This one with Samuel L. Jackson? Yeah. Oh, I like that one, with the garbage trucks? Yeah. Yeah, I like that one. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I really like that one. That was May of 95, so. Okay. Those are my honorable mentions. Yeah, I mean, speaking of you just mentioned Jaws, that's that's one of my honorable mentions. And I'm sure a lot of people at home are going to be like, how can you not mention Jaws? That's considered in many lists and by many people to be the... The number one, be all and all. You know, because it basically spawned that whole thing you know yeah, that was like one of the first wasn't it I yeah think so. yeah yeah the first one that was considered that because it was big budget it combined big name actors it can combine major special effects it you know had this crossover appeal to it and everything i totally respect it for that for me the thing is is i enjoy jaws it's not one of my favorite movies yeah like, same it's done really well, but I mean, you know me and my personal taste. I'm not. I'm not generally into those kind of movies that much. I Jaws is great. I mean, I do enjoy Jaws. I like that one. I there's there's elements of two that I like more than the first Love one. Love two, man. Yeah, <clears throat> there's elements of two that I that I really really like. Um, but I I have to honorable mention it because it deserves to be mentioned. But right. n sorry, folks, just because this was a personal choice thing of like exactly. what I want, and I obviously I did not see this at the theater. I was only two years old when that came out, so <laughs> or maybe I did see it at the theater, but I, I don't I remember, don't remember yeah. it. So there was that. Obviously, Jurassic Park is one of my honorable mentions. Another honorable mention for me would be because to me, if you're talking strictly about like summer feel good a movie that i automatically want to see in the summer and i saw it in the summer i instantly connected with it and it was one of those weird movies where i felt nostalgic about it already like when it came out i it, you know because the movie's kind of about nostalgia and that is 1993's dazed and confused mm. like hilarious movie you know, about teenagers in 1976 getting out of school for the summer and everything and showing the dichotomy between the, the eighth graders that are going into high school and then the kids that are graduating high school and the kids that are going into their senior year. And, I, you know, and then there's crossover with that and there's incredible. It's all my favorite music, of course, you know, because it's fucking Aerosmith and Kiss and all sorts of shit like that. And I, you know, just just love it. Uh, again, incredible cast. I mean, 
super iconic. Matthew McConaughey, you know, yeah, all that kind of stuff. But to me, for one thing, this does not qualify as a blockbuster, you know. Now, retroactively, I think people would consider this a blockbuster mm -hmm. because all those names, you know, people like McConaughey, Affleck, all these people that were in it that became big stars and even some of the ones that weren't as big but became respected, known stars and everything. And Richard Linklater became a more respected writer and director and everything. You can look back on it and go, well, no, that's a big movie. It, it was not a big movie when it came out. You know, it was almost it was just this shy of being an indie film, you know, kind of like somebody I considered a movie because it's another one that represents summer and everything to me, a movie like Mallrats. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mallrats. Mallrats is a great summer, fun, crazy movie to watch, mm -hmm. you know, on a, on a hot July night kind of thing, you know, Friday night. But again, it's not a blockbuster to me. That doesn't qualify as a blockbuster. You know, now we look at that as being a classic, but it wasn't at the time. Right. And it's like Labyrinth. It's right. A bomb at the box office, but now has a huge following. Right. And it's amazing. <laughs> right. So I had to disqualify that. And one of the biggest disqualifications, man, that kind of goes along with why you didn't include something like Indiana Jones and stuff. <laughs> it's a big one for me is obviously people noted that I didn't include Star Wars. Yeah. You know, which is another one that many people consider one of the all time greatest, you know, summer. I mean, my God, <laughs> summer of 77, you know, and then even they, they re-released it the following summer in 78 and it was still just as fucking big or bigger. <laughs> I mean, big now. Right. And then and for me, even as much or more so when Empire Strikes Back came out at the end of May 1980, that was a big one for me because I was already a fan. I went opening day with my mom, stood in line for like an hour, hour and a half or something like that to get into the theater, sweltering in the heat. It was a really hot May day. I remember it super clearly, even though I was only seven years old. And that summer was all about Empire Strikes Back for me. I don't know if I cared about anything else that summer <laughs> but that. So that has that whole thing, but Empire Strikes Back, even the first Star Wars, those aren't so, like I'll watch those anytime. I don't have a, like a particularly strong association with those being summer movies the way I think of like, I mean, not that I couldn't watch Independence Day anytime. any time of the year. Or sure, I can. But there's something like Vito said, there's something about the tradition of seeing it in july you know what i mean right. it's got that connection to it and star wars even though it makes perfect sense when other people tell me that it is for them for me i don't have that connection to it right i can watch star wars anytime it's it's timeless it it's it's not seasonal you know so that's why those were left out but Man, there's tons more I'm sure we could... Oh, yeah, I'm sure there's tons we forgot about. Yeah, I mean, if I was just talking about movies that make me think of summer, you know, there's, like I said, there's things I would think of American graffiti. I think of Greece. You yeah, know. I, I always think of Greece, even though it happens during, during the, the school, school year. year. The only... Day, well, <laughs> the you... first and the end of it. Well, you... summer. You get the very, very... The pre-credits with... with right. With uh, like, Danny and Sandy. The very beginning is summer, and the very end it goes to summer. But everything in between... It's not. It's all in the school year. Yeah. But still, to me, it's a summer. It it does. It does have that feeling to it. It does. I, I, that could have maybe been in my list, but mm, again, it's not... It's not really a summer movie to me, so just it just it's just a little outside so <laughs> you know anyway this was fun this was it nice was fun. this was this was a lot of fun so uh we will be back soon ish at least maybe by the fall <laughs> or something <laughs> and we're gonna do we've already planned it out we've got another uh top five topic we're going to do uh coming up in the upcoming weeks that we're gonna tackle dealing with a Really cool, hip 90s and 2000s director. You guys can... Should be real interesting. Yep, it's going to kill <laughs> Bill. <laughs> <laughs> There's your hint. <clears throat> and we're going to talk about his movies. And uh, But in the meantime, let us know what you thought of our lists, I'm afraid. What are your lists? Yeah, I would... Personal list, not overall list, 
personal list. Yeah. Yeah. Don't just copy what Entertainment Weekly says is the top five best, you know, summer blockbusters. I want to know what yours are. Follow your own parameters. And uh, let us know in the comments, uh, wherever it is that you're watching or listening to us right now. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, share this. Of course, join us in the Geeking Squad group on Facebook. That is The Geeking Squad. It's free to join. Don't be a dill hole. And no will... politics, no religion. Nope. Just top five awesome movies and uh, that kind of stuff. Join <laughs> us in there. We'll talk to you all soon. Mm-hmm. Geeking Poetic. Out. <laughs> Peace out, everybody. See ya. Bye. Bye.